Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro and in today's video I'm gonna build another one of those RF modulator kits and I'm gonna test it on this uh, Commodore 64 and uh, yeah the picture uh, is coming from the original RF modulator and uh, yeah it's not bad but uh, there might be a possible improvement it might be hard to see while uh, filming the screen but uh, the characters are a little bit smeared out, yeah. Some artifacts and uh, color, there are jail bars, however this kit will not fix that. So are you in the Christmas mode yet? I am for sure, <laughs> as you can see. So this kit, I bought it a long time ago, I don't remember now, I'll see if I can find the link. Uh, and it comes with all uh, the necessary parts. Let's see if we can organize this a little bit. So this kit uh, contains all the parts to build a RF modulator replacement. However, it doesn't replace uh, the RF out signal. It only replaces the part uh, that produces uh, the composite video that goes out through the video port of the Commodore. And uh, if you install this you need to remove the original RF modulator and then you will lose the RF um, output but that's not a big problem I'm not using that uh, anymore if I can avoid it here's the PCB and uh, you can see the github address there if you want to find more details about this kit this looks like a nice uh, PCB uh, well made if you are in need of uh, some PCBs I want to have them produced uh, if you have designed something yourself or you want to find something that the other has designed and get it produced, you can go to pcbway.com and they will produce PCBs for you in a matter of days and have it shipped right to your door in a couple of days. Every component has been marked so it should be pretty easy to solder this up. So I'm gonna just organize everything now and we're ready to do the soldering. I'm not going to show the whole process because uh, that will be time consuming. And actually I have a video uh, I made a while back where I built one of these, uh, which is uh, more detailed if you want to take a look at that. Everything is sorted. Uh, I also got this uh, PCB here, which is another uh, RF modulator replacement. Uh, this one comes uh, complete, uh, I didn't build it. It's uh, from a Copper Dragon and uh, yeah, I thought I'll actually try and compare these two after I finished with soldering this. All right, I'm gonna start with the smallest components uh, or the most low profile ones. So that would be uh, the resistors, I guess. Uh, and we have one diode here as well. And uh, all the components are marked uh, on uh, the PCB, so it should be easy to find the correct spot. That was all the resistors and the one inductor, and we are ready to solder. And <laughs> oh boy, it's a forest of uh, <laughs> pins here. Let's see now if I can manage to reach all the points. That was the soldering of the resistors, looking good. Next are the diode and uh, these are some transistors or a voltage regulator. The diode goes in uh, here like this, standing up. Then some long-legged caps. <laughs> Next, a couple of uh, transistors, Q1 and Q2. And the voltage regulator. Then we have two electrolytes and those are polarized, so you need to find the correct direction and the minus goes to the white field.
Alright, we are near to the end here with the soldering and these two potentiometers go here. And these are adjustable resistors, of course. And these you can use to fine-tune uh, the picture. The rest is just um, pin headers for uh, jumpers and uh, yeah, the connectors for the motherboard in the Commodore. There is actually one capacitor left over and it is marked as R3 question mark. So not really sure what the meaning is of that. If you should have it over R3, I'm not gonna do it. Last ones. That was the last solder pin. All right, soldering is uh, done. Just gonna clean up the board a little bit. So that wasn't too much work actually. And uh, yeah, now we're ready to test, but first we need to desolder uh, the original uh, RF modulator from the Commodore. I took the motherboard out of the machine and uh, this is the big uh, TV modulator uh, metal can that we're gonna remove. And it's uh, of course soldered in uh, on the back side and uh, yeah, there are some big solder points here. Luckily not all are uh, soldered so it's not too much work but it can be tricky to get uh, all the solder away and um, uh, take out uh, this uh, modulator. I am going to use my uh, desoldering uh, station to remove most of the solder and uh, then I might have to use some solder wick to get uh, everything away. So it's this one and this one and this one. That one belongs to this uh, cartridge shield. The difficulty is to heat up <laughs> because there's so much uh, metal. Yeah, I think that went okay. So now I'm gonna desolder the actual connections. So I will probably need to go several rounds. A little flux always helps. So I think it's loose now. It took a while, but um, yeah. There you go. So now I just want to clean up uh, the pads. It's a mess after all that uh, solder and uh, old flux left over. The new RF modulator goes in like this and I'm just gonna try and keep it like that to keep the, <laughs> the connection straight. So now I can solder it, just a little bit of flux first. Alright, so that was not very straight was it, but it came with this support and I can put it underneath like this and perhaps use some glue to keep it there. I'm actually going to glue on this with some uh, super glue. I also added the pin headers to this Copper Dragon variant, so uh, that will fit as well. By the way, both these can be configured to be used on both the long board or short board motherboards. 
for this one you actually need to solder uh, the pin headers uh, in the other holes if you want to use it on a short board. All right, we are ready to test. Okay, does it work or does it blow up? <laughs> yeah, it works. Nice. Is the picture any better than with the original uh, modulator? Well, it's hard to tell. <laughs> Doesn't seem like it's uh, improved uh, much, but uh, I'm going to try and adjust these uh, pots, see if we have an effect. Not much happening there. Let's try the other one. So I'm turning the other one. Not sure what these are supposed to do actually. Okay, now no. it's getting a lot lighter, the picture. Don't know if you can notice it, but uh, yeah. Turning it back and then it gets a little bit darker. The other one. The pot to the left, I can't see anything happening when I turn it. I turn it all the way and now all the way to the other side. These pots you need to turn at least like 10 or 15 times around. No, no change on that one. Well, the picture is all right, not bad at all. So uh, at least this is a good replacement if um, the modulator you have is uh, bad or doesn't work. Now let me try the Copper Dragon one. It's uh, much smaller, so it's a lot nicer actually. All right, so uh, no picture. <laughs> okay, so I actually found out that uh, this one needs uh, a ground connection. It has a hole there, so I'm just gonna place it uh, here. Let's see now. Yeah, sure enough, <laughs> it works. And the picture quality on this one is uh, like this, so uh, yeah. It's almost the same, I can't tell it either way. Is it better or worse? It's the same. <laughs> so if I remove the ground wire, then it <laughs> turns off. All right, so uh, that was it. I'm gonna go for uh, the one I built. Put it in like that. And uh, this machine uh, has been modernized when it comes to the RF modulator. All right, that was it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please hit the like button. And as always, thanks to my patrons. So see you next time. Bye bye.